Praise the Lord, everybody. We got to this morning. Good. Let's all stand in this house. We know our crowd's thin this morning. It's fall break. And we got a big group at Disney and lots of people out of town and some out with some sickness and recover from surgery and things. But uh, you're here this morning. And more importantly, God's here this morning. And you know what? I told our, our men as we went in there to pray, it says in my Bible that two or three are gathered in his name, and he is there in the midst. And God is in our midst this morning. And if there's any needs that you have in this place this morning, they can be met. Amen. So uh, let's get ready to let's get ready to worship him this morning. Because it says that, that he inhabits the praise of his people. And if we want God to come in here and do something mighty this morning, we got to lift him up. we got to praise him and worship him the way that he deserves to be praised and worshiped. So let's all lift our hands and let's get ready for service. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. God, thank you for this, this beautiful morning that you've given us, God. Jesus, I pray right now, Lord, as we begin to lift this worship up to you, God. Jesus, I pray that you be glorified, dear Lord, throughout this service and everything done everything said, God, we just want to give you the praise. God, if there are needs in this house this morning, God, I pray that you would just begin to, God, let us lift those needs up to you, God, and lay them at your feet, dear Lord. And God, that we would leave this place changed this morning, dear God. Jesus, we're expecting big things this morning. And God, we thank you for what you're about to do in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all want your business we sing freedom this morning.
remind everybody that this coming Wednesday night we'll continue our Fruit of the Spirit series and make sure we come out this Wednesday night for that. Pink Sunday will be October 27th. Make sure you wear something pink as we are all the greatest ladies who have been battling cancer and who have battled breast cancer. Uh, we'll be hosting a Fall for Jesus Festival on that same day, October 27th at 5 p.m. Uh, we're not going to meet today. We're going to meet next Sunday after church to uh, prepare for that. Uh, we'll also want to remind all the men that before church every Sunday morning, we're going to pray at 950. So make sure men that we get here a little bit earlier and uh, so we can pray at 950. Uh, go ahead and get all of our bus to come down. Timmy Cruz, Laura Grinder, Jackson Brothers, Cindy Miller, Star Camp, Sarah Brown, Kawana Sorrow, Ann Banks, Mark Brown, Tammy Miller, Willie Flores, Rebecca Haskins, Tom Hogan, Travis Legg, Ariel Ross, Jazz McIntyre, Spunny Parker, Liliana Morgan, Brady Moore, Caroline Edwards, Belinda Pritchett, John Pike, Jeff Donahue, Jesse Brubaker, and Christian Alper, all these people are battling cancer. Steve Dake, Lee King, Scott Wilford, Timmy Owens, Casey Craven, Patrick Armour, Julian Watkins, George Bonner, Lizzie Tuttle, Tom, Tom Sturgis, Sandra Statton, Martha Taylor, Donna Shelton Smith, Wayne Pleasure, Cameron Lewis, and Austin Anderson. All these people need a healing in their bodies. Finley Gaddis and Casey are having complications from birth. Jessica Murphy needs a healing in her home. Jason Arendelle and Larry Turner, both are recovering from surgery. Mama Duke, Lisa Anderson, she fell and hurt her, hurt her knee. Hudson Calloway is not feeling well this morning. We need to keep all our neighbors in North Carolina and Florida in our prayers. They've been through a lot with these two hurricanes, and I was reading this morning, there's apparently another one that started to come up uh, that will be here within the week. Uh, if there's anything anybody can do to help out, do it. If you feel led to do it, do it. But we need to keep all of our neighbors in our prayers that are going through that. We also need to remember our youth and everybody that is traveling with them at Disney this week that, uh, that they have a good time and a safe trip back home. Any, uns not any unspoken prayer requests by their lifted hand. All right, let's go to God this morning. Lord, we thank you, God, for today. God, thank you for being with you. God, for never changing, for always being the same to us and for us each and every day. God, thank you for your love. And God, for just you being our Father. God, you know all the prayer requests. God, we trust you that you got it all. God, we ask that you be with Brother Levi this morning. Touch him this morning. Let him be obedient with you and mindful of you. And God, we pray that you allow him to, for you to lead him in the message this morning and let us all receive it. God, be with our country, Lord. Be with us in this time of need. Glory with everything we're lost in the honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we want our kids to come up and bless us with a song this morning.
kids did such a good job. Anyway, awesome job.
you what, I want to put all my eggs in his basket. And I know that he's going to take care of us regardless of what happens. That God is in control. He'll always be in control. And as long as we put our faith and our hope and our trust in him, then we don't have anything to worry about. Yes, we may face persecution. We may face hard times. But I'm telling you right now, all that's really leading to that eternal home and glory. And it's going to be worth it all. I promise you. It's going to be worth every single bit of it. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap on the praise this morning. Amen. God is good. And all the time, let's say that one more time. God is good. And all the time, amen. It's true. One of the reasons why God is so good is because he doesn't change. Just as Brother Lee mentioned earlier, you know, the seasons change, but God never does. Now, I know that he said that I haven't changed since I was like five years old. I don't know. I've actually changed a lot. Um, I've changed a lot, and then I've had to change a lot. Um, I think what he meant to say is I'm still a, I'm still a kid at heart. And, uh, and, that's, and that's the truth. I am. I'm, I'm like a big kid. Casey tells people all the time that she's she's raising four, not three. So um, it is what it is. But God is good, and He's good all the time. You know, regardless of how dark or tough our situation may be, he, He's good. And he's faithful, and He's worthy of our praise. And, you know, it's a lot easier to proclaim that God is good when everything is going the way that we feel like it should go, right? You notice what I said right there, the way that we feel like it should go. See, sometimes God has to put up a roadblock or a detour to get you back to where you should have been the whole time. And we get frustrated because we hit a wall, but what God is really doing is He's saying, hey, just like we talked about last week, I shut that door for a reason, to force you back to where you should have been all along. You know, there's so many times that we've got this idea in our, our, idea in our mind that you know, this should be like this or that should be like that. And if we don't, if we don't watch it, We'll end up trying to play God. I'll tell you real quick, fast, and in a hurry. I'm not God. I've got God's power coursing through my veins. I believe that with everything inside of me. But you know what? I'm not God. And if, and if we try to make things happen on our own, normally we're going to mess it up. It's, it's not going to be a good thing. So I say that to say that, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to brag on Jesus when, you know, when we're around a lot of people and, you know, when there's an altar, you know, full of people that are coming home to God, the baptismal pool, pool you know, we've got, you know, three or four people that we baptize. It's, it's a lot easier to brag on God during those moments, right? But when we face personal problems, when we do hit that wall or, or we're down in the valley, we're facing personal trials and, you know, behind closed doors, you know, we begin to ask the question that I'm sure a lot of us have asked before, why God? Why? Why am I going through this? Why am I going through this right now? And I think that a lot of times that we forget just how good God really is. Even on the days to where it, it seems like it's it's tough. It's harder to, to pick ourselves up. It's harder to, to get the words out in praise. You know, I, I, I talk a lot about this, but you know, it just it, it's always, you know, to me, it's one of the greatest examples. 
that we can ever have. If you go and read the the book of Job, and you, you look at everything that Job went through, I can go ahead and tell you right now, if I would have went through a part of what Job went through, just a piece of it, not all of it, just a piece, I probably would have been at my wit's end. I probably would have been, you know, ready to say, okay, God don't love me anymore. Or wonder, why is God picking on me? But Job remained faithful. He remained faithful to God. Even when his wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Job's answer was, though he slay me, yet I will praise him. Even though things aren't going the way that I think they should, even though things are rough right now, even though I'm down in the valley, he's still a good God. And at the end of the day, he still died for me. He still shed blood for me. That you know what? Maybe things might be tough in this life right now, but he said he's going to prepare, prepare a place for us. He's going to prepare a place that's just for you and I. That nobody else can take. So many times we allow our circumstances to dictate how we feel about God in the moment. When in actuality, His goodness hasn't changed at all. His goodness hasn't changed one bit. You know, a lot of times the things that we face, y'all heard me say this before too, the things that we face that, you know, we just automatically want to say, you know, you know, the devil's after me, the devil's after me. You know, a lot of times the reason that we're going through things that we're going through is not because the devil's after me. It's because we didn't do what we were supposed to do in the first place. We weren't obedient. And we don't have anybody else to blame but ourselves. But what's awesome is that no matter what you've done, no matter what the circumstance is, you can still lift your hands and call out to God and say, God, I need you. I need your help. I need you to pick me up. I need you to be here with me in this valley in this low place in my life, in this dark area, and God will show up. He'll show up right there in the midst. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there that when you've got something going on in your life that, that you could you know, probably call and say, hey, I need some help. And some people, they may tell you why. I can't right now. Now there are some people in your life that they'll come running. I want to tell you, those people are few and far between. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before that I don't know how many of y'all listen to country music. I don't listen to a lot of country music. I used to listen to a lot more. Um, but how many of y'all have heard that song, you find out who your friends are? And that's the truth. You find out who your friends are when you're down in that valley. Because there's a lot of people that will say, well, you know what? I'm not willing to go down there with you. But there's a select few that will say, I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. And some of you might say, well, I ain't got no people like that in my life. It's a lie. Because God will always go and meet you down in that valley. And he's the truest, most faithful, best friend that we could ever ask for. Yeah. It says that he would never leave us, that he would never forsake us. And I want you to know this morning, number one, you're not alone. And number two, God's still good. He's still good. If you got your Bibles with you this morning, let's turn to James chapter 1. Y'all bear with me this morning. I've been coughing for about a week. He 
just did a number on my voice. And um, I'm going to try and get through this the best I can. While you're turning there, I want to say a big thank you to Brother Emmett Compton back there for bush hogging our field over there. It looks, looks good. He's got it all ready for the fall festival. Brother, we appreciate you. James chapter 1, and I'm going to be starting in verse 16. Amen. If you got it in your, your word, say amen. amen. All right. Let's get into it this morning. It says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Amen. Now I want to jump back to verse 16 right there. And in verse 16, we see this word that says, Do not be deceived. Now, deceived means to be led astray. This verse is saying, hey, don't be led astray. And in the beginning of this chapter, if you go back and read, James talks about our trials and our temptations. And what we've got to understand is we can't allow these things to contaminate our minds and allow us to question God's goodness. Because if we allow them to, you know, live up here in our head, then that is when the devil will come in and he'll do a work on you. Because he's going to try and convince you, hey, God don't love you. God doesn't care about you. If he did, why would you be here? And he'll try to tell you, hey, I got a place for you. And he'll make it look all beautiful. It'll, it'll look amazing. And he'll, he'll just put it out there for you. Like bait on a hook. You know, I love to fish. I hadn't fished in a few years, but I love it. And one of the things about fishing is, you know, making sure that you got some good bait. Making sure you got some bait that those fish are going to want. I'm pretty sure Brother Scott knows a lot about that. <laughs> I always used to enjoy fishing with these, uh, they're called water, watermelon seed. I always had good luck with watermelon seed. I don't know why. And, you know, there's even a way that you, you put it on the hook, you know, to, to make it to where that, that worm it's not a real worm. It's a trick worm. But when you throw it out there on that, on that water and you're fishing for some bass and it's sitting there on the top of that water and you begin to reel it in, that thing does just like this. It looks just like a real worm. And the way you set that hook up is you, you take it and you push it all the way to the top of that hook and then you barely go on the hook part with the worm where you can't even see the end of the hook. Fish can't even see it. All it sees is a worm swimming. And if you're lucky, and I have been before, there have been times that I haven't. If you're lucky, that bass will pop that hook and you can feel it. And you just start reeling in. That's what the devil wants to do to you. He wants to put something out there that it looks good. It smells good. You know, it, it looks like something that you, you'd want to have. And it looks like something that's real. And as soon as you bite down onto it, he's got you. This is why we need discernment in our lives. This is why we need the Holy Ghost working inside of us to give us that spirit of discernment so we know what's real 
and what's fake. Because I want you to know that the devil is going to trick you. He's going to do everything in his power to deceive you and lead you astray. We've got to understand that just because everything, just because things look good out there, doesn't mean they're good for us. We don't want to leave them alone. It says that we should not be deceived. The next thing that I want to talk about this morning is the fact that in verse 17, it says God wants to give us good gifts. Good gifts. How many of y'all like getting gifts? Y'all like receiving gifts? See, y'all y'all like, you know, waking up on Christmas morning and there being a present for you up under there. You know, if there wasn't a present for you, you know, you might you might be upset, right? You might be, you know, kind of down and out. I want you to know that, that God's got something for you. Amen. And we serve a good God. And with him being a good God, he's got good gifts for us. If you look at verse 17 right there, it uses the word gift twice. It says, in Greek, the translation has two separate meanings for these different gifts. It says there, it says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. The first use, the good gift, it focuses upon the act of giving. And there are times that in our human nature that we give because we feel obligated to give or we give out of spite. Anybody ever been there before? You felt obligated to give somebody something? <clears throat> so our motivation isn't always pure like it should be. The second use, the perfect gift, focuses on the gift itself that is being given. That word perfect, it means complete, a completeness. God gave us a complete gift in the form of Jesus Christ. And the work that he completed on the cross, that is all a gift that he gave us. Now, here's the other side of that. Somebody can give you a gift all day, but you have to receive the gift. You have to receive it. I'm going to step on my own toes this morning. Is that okay? Don't sound so good, Mom. As long as I step on yours or Casey's, yeah. So Casey, she uh, she gives me good gifts. She's a good gift giver, and. Gosh, I can't remember how many years ago it's been now. But Casey got me something that's it's a pretty nice gift. And I opened it up and I see it and, and it's these headphones. Some Sony headphones. And, and they got these big like muffs on them to where they go completely around the ears and they're supposed to be like like noise canceling and, and all that stuff. And I mean they're they're a nice set of headphones. But the reason she gave me the headphones, I guess I'm gonna step on your toes a little bit. The reason she gave me the headphones is because I would go get in the bed and turn the TV on because in order for me to fall asleep I have to turn the TV on and, and watch a little bit of TV and then I kind of drain myself. But I'm also hard of hearing, and I wanted to hear. So I'll turn the TV up, not 
what I thought was loud, but because I'm hard of hearing, it was loud for her. And she got tired of it, so she bought me these headphones. A gift out of spite. <laughs> and, it, and it was a good gift. But it just feels weird sitting in the bed with a pair of headphones, you know, while I'm trying to go to sleep, you know. I mean, you know, it just, it just feels weird. And I think I maybe used them one time. And I just, I didn't like the feeling of having headphones on while I'm sitting on a pillow trying to go to sleep. So, unfortunately, that gift that she gave me is still sitting on our dresser, being unused. Because I might have taken the gift from her, but I'm not using the gift. That means that I didn't fully receive the gift. See, you can come down to this altar right here, and you can ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and that's all great. It's, it's, it's awesome, but if you don't put him to use in your life, and you don't allow him to change you, and shape you, and mold you, then you're just going to be stagnant. See, we have to put that gift that he's given us into action. We have to use it. We have to lean on him. So now, I had to change it up a little bit because I said, you know what? She's going to kill me if I don't use these headphones and this, you know, TV is still loud. So that was around the same time that I started watching TV with subtitles on and lowering the volume. And so now that's how I pretty much watch everything I watch except for live sports because I don't want words up on my screen, you know, getting in the way of, you know, you know watching the game. Mainly because a lot of the times they'll put the subtitles up at the top and I'm like, there's stuff going on up there. I'm like, just put it down at the bottom. But I had to change it a little bit. But, you know, I begin to think, you know, how did that make her feel? You don't have to answer. It's not tough. <laughs> how did that make her feel that, you know, she put fault? She, she paid money for this gift. And it's... Just go into waste. I begin to think about how does Jesus feel when he looks at us and he sees all these other things that we're involved in, but we won't spend time in prayer. We won't study our Bible. We won't worship him the way that he deserves to be worshipped. I'm sure it hurts. Because he paid a price to give us this gift. It says in Matthew 7, 9 through 11, it says, Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? You know, if you like giving gifts, I know that there's a lot of, you know, anticipation that goes into that. You know, especially if you get a gift that you think that somebody's really going to love. And you go and you give them the gift. And if their energy doesn't match the energy that you kind of play out in your head, it might kind of mess with you a little bit, right? And I want you to know that God's not like that. God, God has got some amazing gifts that he wants to give us. And, and not just Jesus, but through Jesus. You know, he wants to, you know, to give you the, the gifts of the Spirit. But sometimes it doesn't show up like we think that it should See, a lot of times, you know, we get this image or, or picture in our head of how things are supposed to play out, and it's not, it's not what God intended. God didn't 
God didn't mean for it to work like that. But we still think that that's how it should work. I've used this illustration before, but I want to use it again. How many of y'all growing up used to go outside and play? I want to tell you right now that that's something that doesn't happen much, much very often anymore. But I know that Stafford had a friend over yesterday in case he said they didn't do it. They went outside and played for a while. And then they came inside and played for a while. And, you know, I would like to hear that they went outside and played. You know, Stafford maybe broke her pinky. We're not sure. <laughs> but I was actually happy about it. Because you know what? Those are memories. You know? Those are things, such a chance that we can, we can talk about, you know, remember that time we were jumping on the trampoline and I broke my pinky? You know? Remember that time I went over the front of the boat and got ran over? <laughs> that really happened? I got ran over by a boat. My daddy was driving. <laughs> we hit a sandbar out in the middle of nowhere and whoop, I went over the front. The boat went right over the top of me. How I didn't get killed, I'm not sure. But here we are. Here we are. When I say God's good, God's good. He really is. The reason I'm picking on Chad right now because everybody I've told that story to before, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. I told that story to Tim and Chad's. Not long after I met them the first time, they just started busting out laughing. And I'm like, this wasn't a funny story. You know? This, it's like going into the movies and watching a horror film and thinking, this is hilarious. You know? This is a tragedy. So what did I do? I started laughing. And so now everybody tells the story I laugh. So, you know what? There's joy that can be had in all situations. But, you know, I, I do have so many memories of coming home from school and, and you know, Going outside and playing, even when I wasn't supposed to be outside. Yes. Mom and Daddy told me not to go outside until they got home. We, we listened real well to that. Yeah. We went outside and we, we did what we wanted to. I just want to find another. And I'm talking about, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, wrecking bikes, uh, golf carts, yes. um, breaking windows. Uh, with, with golf balls, I mean, you know, all kinds of mess. But, you know, there were memories that were made. Well, I always loved it, you know, when we did get to go outside and play. And, you know, especially, you know, at my house, if, you know, my mom and dad were home, or, but even more so at, at my granny's house. We would go outside and play and come back in and guess what we wanted? We wanted a snack. Because we've been outside playing. Now, you come in for a snack, you want something good, right? Well, imagine you came in from playing, you're tired, you're sweating, and you come in for a snack and your mom or your grandmother or whoever it is, they say, here. And you look down and it's two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And you're like, what in the world? Well, they said, well, here, here's two teaspoons of bacon soda or some bacon powder. Here's three large eggs. You know, what, what do you think about this? Does this look good? Here, here's a cup of vegetable oil. Or maybe you really have some butter going. You know, I'd be like, what in the world? What is, what is this? This isn't a snack. This is a bunch of mess. Now, the thing is, is that you take those ingredients right there and you try and eat them by themselves, or drink them by themselves, ugh, it'd be disgusting. Terrible. But you know what? If you start to put them together, 
then something great can be made out of that. Now, there's another part of that message. You can't just give anybody those ingredients and they come out good. Because if you give me those ingredients, not good. It's going to be bad. It's going to be an adventure. But it's not going to be good. But if I take those ingredients right there and I give them to Sister Chaz, she can do something awesome with them. And you know why? Because I've tasted it before. Because she's a cake maker. And all those ingredients right there that can be used to make a cake. And now if I came in from out playing and, and you sat down a piece of cake in front of me, I tell you what, this I'm gonna be happy. I'm not gonna be upset. But if you take and just give me one little thing at a time or by itself, I'm gonna look at you like you're stupid. I want you to know that we've got this same kind of mentality in our spiritual walk with God. Yeah. That in our time of need, in our time of want, sometimes He gives us one little piece so that we can take it and we can keep it until He's ready to give us the next piece. And then all of a sudden we can put all those ingredients together and then we've got something awesome. But a lot of times we get too impatient to wait on God for the Lord. We don't allow him to do a work over time because we've got this mindset that, that I call the fast food mentality. That we want something then and we want it now and we want it to be right. And we want it to be whole and complete. When God's saying, hey, do you trust me enough to let me do a work in your life? Because a work isn't just going to happen all at once. You know, I begin to think about it. I tell people this all the time. That healing is something that, you know... I believe that we serve a suddenly God. We serve a right now God. And he can do stuff just like that if he wants to. But a lot of times, healing is a process. Healing is a process. And sometimes God, he'll give you that whole cake. But sometimes he wants to give you that one ingredient at a time. And we've got to trust him. It's important to know that when God gives you these ingredients, when he gives you these one little things at a, at a time, that, that we follow his instruction. And if we follow the instructions the way we're supposed to, then we should have the cake at the end. Now, I know I joked around before about me making a cake. I actually have made a cake before, believe it or not. And it was edible. <laughs> now, it wasn't one of Sister Chastis cakes. But, no, you didn't eat that cake. I mean, it's hard. <laughs> oh, well, I agree with that. We know it wasn't as good as Sister Chastis. You know. But it, it wasn't bad. And it was a learning experience. I had never made a cake before. And I learned. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna take us taking those ingredients and, and stirring them together. There was a reason I asked you that question earlier. I asked her, I said, Sister Chas, I said, is it true that you have to break one egg at a time, you know, when you're making a cake? And Chas said, Well, she said, you know, I, I broke one egg at a time. And she said, I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes I just throw them all in there. She said, it came out the same both ways. So, sometimes, you know, things are a little different. But I want you to know that God has given us instructions. He's given us a whole book of what we need to be doing. And we've got to understand that, you know, you can't just, you know, throw it all in the pan and expect it to come out right. We've got to read the instructions. We've got to do what he's asking us to do. There's also, there's got to be order. We've got to have order in our lives. And then, in order to have a cake, you put all those ingredients together, you can just set it on the counter and it'll be a cake, right? No. you got to put it in the oven. 
Now, one thing I love about the oven is there's fire in that oven. But there's also a thing called preheating. Right? Preheating. See, we need to be preheated before we come in here for our service. We don't need to come in here because I go ahead and tell you, if you, if you try to take a cake and you just throw it in and then turn on the preheat, it might not come out right because, you know, you got to know the exact heat, the exact time. It's got to be perfect. If we don't come in here ready to worship God, then what he's wanting to do in this place, it may not happen. What he wants to do. And it goes into that oven and, you know, I, I love the fact that, that oven's got fire to it. It's got heat. And the Bible refers to the Holy Ghost as a fire. And if we place ourselves into that oven and we become to, we allow that heat to begin to work on us. We allow that Holy Ghost to begin to stir inside of us. Then something amazing is going to happen. What happens with the cake when you put it in the heat? It rises up. It's what God wants to do with us. He wants to take us to another level. And in order to do that, we're going to have to take these gifts that he's given us, and we've got to stir it all together. We've got to put it in the pan. We've got to preheat the oven, put it in the oven, and allow it to rise. See, God... He wants to do something in your life. We have to place ourselves in His hands and we have to trust Him. It's going to take the Holy Ghost being applied to those stirred up ingredients so it can rise and become a whole cake. If we want God to make us whole, if we want God to make us complete, then we've got to trust Him. We've got to trust Him. We've got to be patient with it. I love it says in Romans 8 and 28, it's a very popular verse. It says we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. See, I talked about that all-purpose flower. We need some all-purpose Jesus. And we need to know that Jesus is meant for all purposes in our lives for every season. He's not just for the season. I've been talking a lot about Jesus being good down in the valley. You know what? He's good, you know, during the climb. He's good on top of the mountain. He's good in the valley. He's good everywhere. Everywhere we go, he's good. And that's one of the reasons he's good is because my next point is God does not change. In verse 17, it says that the gifts come down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. See, the same God who created the whole universe and all the stars in the sky created you and He knows everything about you. He knows the good. He knows the bad. He knows the ugly. And a lot of people in your life know those same thing, things about you. And they turn their back on you, don't they? They won't talk to you. Or maybe they, they try and remain close to you just so they can go and tell everybody else your business. See, God knows all this stuff about us, but He loves us anyways. He loves us regardless of all the good, the bad, and the ugly in our life. And situations change. Circumstances change. People change. But God does not change. He's not. He says that very simply in Malachi 3 and 6. It says, for I am the Lord. I do not change. I mean, it doesn't get much clearer than that. I am the Lord. I do not change. It also says that there's no shadow turning. You know, as bright as the moon is at times, and I'm telling you, when there's a full moon in our house, 
And I walk out, and it's almost like somebody's got the lights on sometimes. Uh, we do have a lot of windows in our house, and um, we've got curtains, but we don't keep them open. I mean, we don't, we don't close them a lot. But there's times that I have to go in there and close one of the curtains because the moon will be shining through, and I can't sleep because it's like, like I said, somebody's got a light turned on. But as bright as that moon is, sometimes we can't see it because it turns its dark side to us. You know, the sun also goes dark at times because it is eclipsed by the moon. But I want you to know that God's light, it never fades. God's light will always be bright and strong. It will all, always be that, that guiding light that we need in our life. The last thing I want to talk to you about today is the most important gift that God has given us is that gift of salvation. It says in verse 18 that his own, with his own will, he brought us forth. He gave us life. And as you heard me say before, you've heard me say this plenty of times, that there has to be a dying out in order for there to be a second birth. In order to be born again, a death's got to take place. In Romans 6 and 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I love that it calls it a gift there, Sister Season, because that's exactly what it is. It's a gift, but notice what I said earlier. We have to receive that gift. We have to use that gift. We have to allow it to be present in our lives. We don't just take it and say, okay, this is nice. I'm going to put it in my closet and I'm never going to use it again. That's not the way God works. See, the problem is, is we got this flesh that we deal with every single day. And in James 1 and 14 through 15, it says, But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. See, just like God wants to, you know, make us complete, he wants to lift us up and, you know, grow us, shape us, mold us, the devil wants you to be completely lost. And that's why it says here, it says that when one is tempted, he is drawn away by his own desires. We've got to understand this thing's bigger than, than us. It's bigger than us. Amen. If we give in to our own desires, then we're going to face some struggles. We're going to face some hard times. But when we allow God to lead, when we allow the Holy Spirit in our lives to guide us, then God can take us to greater places than we ever thought before. It says in John 1, 10 through 13, it says he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I want you to know this morning, God knows you. God loves you. God wants to use you in his kingdom. What I want to ask you is, do you know him? Do you know him like you should? As well as you should? Are you connected to him? Are you allowing him to lead you and guide you? Let's stand this morning. Now, I know we've been in James 1. I want to read James 1 and 12 real quick. It says, 
Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. That sounds like a pretty awesome gift right there, though. That crown of life. I want you to know right now that I received a lot of gifts in my time. And I'll be real, I'm one of those type of people that, you know, if at Christmas time or my birthday, if I don't receive anything, I'm good. I don't, I don't need anything else. I think part of that reason is, is if I want something, I'll go out and get it. It's probably hard to buy for it. But what I really want is I want to make it to heaven. But the chase, I want to receive that kind of life. I want my family to receive that kind of life. I want everybody in this church to receive that kind of life. But I want you to know it's, it's not going to happen on its own. It requires action from us. It requires us wanting it. And it requires us making sure that, hey, Jesus, He knows me because I know Him. And I know Him well. It says in Psalms 37, 39 through 40, it says, But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust Him. I don't know what you're facing right now. I don't know what's coming against you. I don't know the, the pain that you've experienced, the hurt, the loss. And maybe it was something a long time ago that you've you put away, but it's still, it's still back there. I want you to know this morning that if you trust God, that He can take all that hurt, that pain, that sorrow, and He can replace it with joy. He can replace it with victory. But we've got to trust Him. We've got to trust Him with it. See, just like I told y'all before, if you gave me all those ingredients, you trusted me to cook you a cake, you'd be taking a risk. But if I gave those ingredients to the master, I'm being serious. If I gave those ingredients to the master, then I know that that cake's going to turn out right. If we place ourselves in His hands, then I want you to know that He can make something special out of your life. And you may say, well, you know, I'm, I'm too old. You know, it's... My time's coming past. It's not true. You're still here. There's still time. There's still work that God wants to do in your life. We're going to open up this altar here in a second. And if you feel led to, to come down, I hope that I hope that you won't stay there in your pew. You'll come down and you'll spend some time with God this morning. Because it's important that we do. And not just when things are bad, when things are good. It's important that we thank Him for His goodness and His mercy and His grace. Let's pray this morning. God, we, we love You. We thank You for Your Word, God. I thank You for that promise of the crown of life, dear Lord. And that You've gone to prepare a place for us. God, You know each and every heart, mind, and soul in this house this morning. God, I pray that You would just begin to Move, dear Lord, stir in this place. 
God, we know that there are a lot of ingredients in this house. God, I pray that you should begin to place us, stir us, set us on fire, and grow us, dear Lord. Take us to the next level. But God, this morning we put ourselves in your hands. And we're trusting that you're going to do a work. We thank you for the work that's taking place right now. And God, we give you the praise and glory you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, this, this altar is open. If you want to spend some time with God, I urge you to do so.